All right, uh, Lisa, thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar of SAP Master Data Governance for Retail and Fashion Management, also called as RFM, MDG for RFM. Um, this is a, a new entry of the products which have been released um, by SAP um, on Master Data Governance. Um, and I'm going to walk you through with an overview um, and also walk you through with a demo. Uh, and actually a couple of demos, uh, and we'll open up for Q&As um, after the demos. Yeah. Um, so just to give you a background, master data challenges in the retail businesses uh, are quite a lot. Creation of those articles are very inefficient. Uh, quite a lot of manual process with no clear data ownership fixes. Right? Um, article management is quite a lot based on emails and spreadsheet driven. And so in one of our demos, we'll walk you through some of the spreadsheet driven uh, scenarios also. Gosh. It seems that we have, uh, may have lost the cost, so one moment, please. Well, hi. So, sorry, my apologies. I'm back. Uh, somehow the line got disconnected. Um, so, from um, where I was going was the amount of details um, of the data is constantly increasing with multi-channel uh, retailing. Regulatory forces are um, required now much more to uh, introduce more attributes accurately. Incorrect master data dimensions generate higher costs across the value chain. So bringing in that level of consistency uh, is very much important. Um, we've seen a lot of homegrown solutions which are very expensive to build and maintain. Um, so these are some of the challenges which we have catered and what retailers want uh, in master data management solutions. Establish one, uh, and maintain one use everywhere else uh, as a best practice. Yeah? Uh, having a single version of the truth of the solution which is required, which is what we are going to walk you through. Increase the, the quality of the retail master data through central management and governance. Um, and be able to identify in the governance how you manage the central governance and be able to send the data to outbound any SAP or non-SAP system. Uh, accelerate the availability of up-to-date master data in the business network, be it your buyers or merchandisers. Uh, and the, get the transparency of that master data. Who has changed that, what has changed, when it has changed, and why it has changed. I'm going to walk you through some of the demo scenarios of that. Um, going into the next slide, uh, why master SAP master governance? That's the modern article master governance for retailers. Uh, the most important is we deliver out-of-the-box solution. Yeah? Um, it's a standard out-of-the-box solution, predefined solution based on reusability and extensibility, all based on SAP's MDG framework. Um, and it introduces reusability and extensibility and what it means by this is you can reuse all the existing ECC business rules, the validations, uh, and even if you have some of the custom effort, um, Z tables which you have used or Z fields you have used through event structures, you can reuse some of those and extend those uh, within your existing solution which is provided uh, by MDG RFM. Yeah? Uh, once you're done with this, we provide a robust data replication to send the data outbound to your other SAP or your non-SAP systems. Uh, it introduces the governance and collaboration um, and the data quality. Uh, governance related to who, why, what, where, when, all that information is captured uh, for your master data. It collaborates through the workflow process and with the data quality, not just the validations, but also making sure you've got search available, fuzzy search available, you've got du uh, duplicate checks available so that you don't create duplicate entries. Yeah. And it is integrated with article object model, which is basically your ECCA article 
uh, model when you run through the backend ECT transaction it is the same article object model which is based on um, so this is a net um, this MPG for RFM solution I'll go a little bit into the deep dive um, now with a few slides and then walk you through the demo um, MDG, just to describe you what MDG provides is master data. This MDG is on SAP Business Suite and running on SAP ERP. It has a native integration with SAP Business Suite. Uh, it reuses uh, all the SAP data model, the UI, the existing business logic, configuration for creation and validation of your master data. So any of your basically T-tables or F4 helps, which we call it, are all available standard out of the box. Uh, it enables standard governance, compliance, and transparency through the integrated staging, approval, and central audit process. What it means by is that you will basically MDG provides you a staging area, and uh, while it is going through an approval process, it tracks, uh, do a central tracking of within audit trail, and until it is not approved, the record is not approved, it is not entered physically in your ECC table structures. Um, and until then, it is in the staging area. It delivers a consistent definitions of your master data with authorizations, roles, and definitions, and replication uh, of your key master data entities for your SAP system. Um, of course, eliminates error-prone manual maintenance of processes uh, because it is a single version of the truth in your multiple system so that you can send the data out to your multiple system. Um, LDG also integrates very well, very nicely with SAP data services, information steward, uh, which is also used for you can call it as a passive form of governance. Uh, MDG is for an active form of governance, which means basically you are trying to ensure that the master data, when it is entered, is correct very actively. And uh, all the necessary checks and balances are put in, in place for your data operators or your data stewards to enter the data uh, correctly. Um, and also it integrates with all your data quality and enrichment scenarios where you want to expand all your scenarios. Going into the next slide, from an architecture perspective, it is based again, as I mentioned, on a master data governance uh, um, custom defined scenarios where on the bottom it runs based on an ABAP stack. As I said, it is running on SAP ECC, which uh, runs on integrated ABAP stack. Um, some of the framework capabilities are it has got data quality interface to making sure, for making sure that you can bring in your data with proper data quality. Duplicate. It has a search and duplicate check through the fuzzy logic and duplicate checking scenarios. There's a concept of the change request which has been introduced. When you create an article master, you are not necessarily creating an article master. You are creating, putting a request to create an article master. You're putting a request to update an article master. You're putting a uh, request to enhance your article master. Um, so it is all driven based on a change request to introduce the necessary tracing of audit trail of who has created what all has changed in the system. Um, there are some analytical capabilities of that level uh, of the change request, who, how many change requests have happened, where are my status of my change request uh, in an approval process, because your approval process may be a two-step, four-step, five-step, whatever you want as a through a workflow governance process. Um, it has got key and value mapping. The concept of the key and value mapping uh, in master data is very important. You, from a central point of governance scenario, uh, when you want to send the data outbound, you want to make sure that the data, when it is sent outbound to other SAP or non-SAP systems, the IDs of those uh, other SAP or non-SAP systems are being tracked. And key mapping is for the core ID of your article of the remote system with, uh, with their system name. And value mapping is for your F4 help or your T-tables. Um, it could be your merchandising category, which could be different. Uh, uh, in a different system while in your central governance system you want to standardize your data. Um, MDG has a rules engine which is a rule based work, uh, rules engine which is BRF plus rules engine. There's a rules UI framework which is based on uh, Web Intro Flow Plan Manager and metadata which is basically driven based on your data model. Um, there is clear data ownership, data replication and validations and the workflows which are provided in within MDG and all of this uh, uh, with MPG, you have got uh, material, customer, supplier, business partner, and all of the financial scenarios, uh, standard predefined by SAP. Um, and what Utopia has developed is MPG for RFM, retail and fashion management, which is what we're going to talk. And also, we have 
developed other enterprise asset management domains on MDG. Um, uh, the user interface is, as I said, we've been pro FPM and uh, exposed via portal, portal uh, NetWeaver business client. So this is a net quick summary of a high-level architecture. Uh, going into the governance and collaboration, uh, as I mentioned, uh, MDG comes with the standard predefined couple of workflow scenario templates, uh, two-step, three-step workflows, which we are going to walk you through, three-step workflow scenarios. But you can basically configure um, your workflow to your own needs. It could be linear or it could be a distributed workflow. Um, any complex workflow could be basically defined and, and, and set up. Um, this is, the workflow is based on a VRF rule-based workflow, which can be configured. Um, it has roles and responsibilities and task authorities for create, change, and approve. Um, so until it is not approved, uh, all your data is in the staging area. Uh, so when you go into your backend ETC system and you see a pending request, you will not be able to see that as a valid record within, the, within your ETC system. It is going to be in the MDG staging area. Um, of course, as I said, it can be adapted and tailored based on your customer needs. It's flexible enough uh, for your distributed environments and also uh, flexible enough to extend your data models to your uh, to tailor your additional fields, additional needs. Um, going into the data quality, the first step uh, from my perspective is doing a search and a duplicate check. So this is what um, MDG provides with a fuzzy search and a duplicate check. You do a search before a create, you could do a copy. I'm going to walk you through the copy. Um, validations are pre pre provided reusing of existing validation logic in ERP. Um, you can use all custom validations of your own, which um, SAP MDG will, uh, RFM will not provide necessarily. It is your custom tailored one. Uh, through the SAP BRF Plus uh, rules engine, you can create your own work, uh, your, your own validations. Um, robust replications there, automatic or manual replications provided through ALE, SOA, SOA or RFC. That's the standard MDG functionality. Uh, from an MDG RFM perspective, we are providing um, ArtMAS as an IDOC, ARTMAS, um, and also for the purchase and for records. Um, and it also provides monitoring and handling, uh, and also provides you filtering. So to one system, you want to send uh, some subset of the data, and another system, you may want to send some subset of the data. Um, that, um, that can be configured and defined through data replication framework. Uh, reuse and extensibility, as I mentioned. Um, your existing data structures are being reused uh, of your business SAP business suite, of your IS retail functions. You can enhance your own functionality. If you have any um, append structures which you have created, you can extend your data structures uh, with your data model, user interface, processes, uh, and data replication. Um, so uh, reuse extensibility is across the board. Yeah. What is the data model coverage out of the box? We provide basic data and classification data, including tax, unit of measure, BOM, characteristics, uh, assignments, and it's a various variant configuration. We also provide purchasing info record, uh, purchase of vendor sites, uh, stores, uh, and distribution centers from a logistics perspective, and listing, sales org, and point of sale data. Um, and from a functionality Scope perspective, we can create single articles, generic articles. I'm not going to go through the list of all the details, but it's a significant coverage across uh, your article master creation process. And of course, expandable and extensible uh, if anything is missing out. Yeah. Um, what I'm going to walk you through is through a three-step workflow change request creation approval process. I'm going to first walk you through for a create of an article master through a Alice as a business user, Bob is going to basically be the data steward, kind of reviewing your master data. And then final review, Charlie is going to do a final review. And then once it is final reviewed, it is going to get approved. And basically, it becomes a valid record in your ETC. I'm going to walk you through also through a request creation, uh, also through a Microsoft Excel uh, file. And the time permitting, I'm going to walk you through the same scenario across the board. Or maybe I'm going to just show you this and then open up for any discussions and dialogues. Yeah? Um, just to play from a uh, screen perspective, there are a couple of these screenshots. I'm going to skip all of this and walk you through the demo. Yeah. So I'm going to just refresh it. It may be pretty. T it may have timed out. So I'm going to. I've logged in as an Alice user, and this is basically end user sees this screen. 
On the right side, as you can see, these are my change requests. What I have as an Alice user have created and how many have been approved, how many are in draft, how many are in process mode. Um, this is uh, not just the, just the change request capabilities. Um, there is another set of change requests is just with my participation which has happened. You can see additional process reporting capabilities, how much processing times it has taken um, with a listing view, with a graphical view, and a status report. Um, also, there are reports related to my change request, which is just my, which I started off, um, and also display change requests, which could be other users um, who has also created and display change documents. I'm going to walk you through the display change documents, what display change documents is. Yeah. So as a starting point, I'm going to go ahead and do a search of an article. You can do a create, change, and display article. So I'm going to do a search of an article. Yeah. So as you can see, quite a lot of fields are there. Um, I'm going to basically search uh, description, let's say, first. Yeah, and uh, once I do a search of a part, I get so many records which are there. As you can see, quite a lot of records have been pub, uh, returned for, as a part. Um, and if you see this uh, clock button, which means that it, there is already a request which is in progress, I can view this. Or also, I can go ahead and continue and say, well, maybe I would want to look at these set of records. So as you can see. Sorry, my apologies. Somehow the line got disconnected again. Um, so as I was specifying, um, this particular record is of interest for me. I can basically go ahead and basically launch and identify what really this record is. And so what I see um, is basically it opens this uh, article, 5006582, and it has got all this basic data where merchandising category is of this first. Um, I can look at the description, um, which has got women's office first, uh, with unit of measure, um, tax data uh, available, um, and characteristic data. Um, as you can see, characteristic data, I selected four variants earlier, and this has got four variants, and it looks good where uh, uh, are you able to hear me? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Um, there are four variants which have been created, and the variant numbers are separately being shown. So if I, if you want to see 655800, 1, 2, 3, and 4, um, this is where uh, 82, 1, 2, and 3, and 4 are also displayed here. So there is a parent because I selected as a generic article. There is a listing data which has been created. Um, there's a purchasing data which has been created with all the reference handling. Sales data has been created. So this looks very interesting to me. So I'll go ahead and do a create. But before I show you a create, let me show you also go back and show you the change documents. Um, and what is change documents? Basically, change documents is allows you to identify what this record has happened and when it was created. All any ex exchange of hands have happened between the places and what all attributes got um, got initiated. Yeah. So as you can see, Alice Cooper was the creator, and all of this data was entered. So if I go on the right side, there was old values, which was null because it was all the new creation, and article category was 01. Valid was at uh, these dates. So all of this information, stored listing procedure, distribution, center listing procedure, all of this data has been entered, and you can identify literally that this was created at this particular time. It was a new based on this 1366 exchange request. So it keeps a track of every data. Any change which happens, the change documents will be able to identify and describe you what the changes are and who all changes have happened. What I'll go ahead and do is basically go ahead and do a copy in the interest of time. 
and when I do a copy of this data, it will copy all my data. And uh, I will basically put in a description and say, well, test for webinar demo, and I'll put in a note and say, please approve additional variants, right? And when I do a, basically a check, it said, well, no characteristics could be determined because it pretty much copied all your data but not necessarily the characteristics. So I'll go ahead and click on characteristics and it's basically blanked out. So I'll just add characteristics profile and I'll say woman's handbag. Um, and then once I add the handbag, basically all the necessary characteristics value assignments are added here. I'll go ahead and pick, let's say, large off-white uh, and also I'll pick large silver. So two variants I'm picking. As you can see from the bottom, I picked that from a usability perspective, it has been highlighted on the top. Yeah. And um, and I'll do a check again, and it looks hopefully good. Uh, but it said, well, there is a duplicate. Do you really want to continue with this? Yeah. I can skip here and uh, basically say select and switch over to these set of duplicate data. Or there is also a pending record. I'm just going to ignore it just for the demo so that I can show you a three-step workflow. So I'm going to basically continue. You can make it as a hard requirement. This, as you can see, is a soft requirement that, yes, with a 50% chances, it is, seems to be a duplicate. You can set to a 70% chances, 80% chances, and that way you, will, you may not find a duplicate. So it's your configuration um, which you can set it up. I'm going to continue with this, and I'm going to basically uh, submit it. Yeah. So I'm going to save the changes and just go. 1393 record has been created. So if I go to home and uh, if I go to the change request um, and basically go, and go to my change request, which basically gives a reporting, it says basically 1393 record test for webinar demo changes to be executed has happened, right? Changed by this. Now I need to go check the workflow log. Uh, what happened behind the scenes. And it says, well, ready to be processed, basically. And who's the processor is Bob Dylan is the processor and it is ready to be processed. Yeah, The background steps have taken place. Background steps are a lot of decision making, who's the processor, how much time it has happened, uh, whether the duplicate check got triggered or not, what all validations of ECC got triggered or not. So all of those background checks also happen in the, back, in the behind the scenes. Yeah. So I'm going to basically log out of all of this, actually. Um, and I'm going to log on as Bob. And I'm going to click on the change request. And this is going to be my inbox. And as you can see, 1393 is the record which I needed to, be, uh, I needed to process. Um, so if I'm going to click on this 1393 record uh, to, for me to process, I can see all the necessary data set. Yeah? Um, let's say I want to enter, and as you can see, these are all editable screens right now. And, uh, I'm going to basically select, let's say, extra threes as the uh, uh, division, right? And I'm going to basically see the notes and look at it and say, well, two variants are there. I'll say approve. I can look at all the other tabs. Uh, and as you can see, the buttons have changed. I have an option to approve or reject. If I reject, it goes to my, the Alice back. I can configure it and say reject means that I don't need to send it to Alice and completely end the workflow. It's a configurable workflow. So I'm going to basically just go ahead and approve and quickly walk you through um, the next set of the demos. So once I basically approve it, um, I look at this and uh, I'm going to log on, log out of this. And the next step, as I know, it is Charlie. And I, if I go back again in the workflow log, it will tell me that the Charlie is the processor. Yeah, I'm just skipping a couple of steps in the interest of time. Um, and if I go back to the change request. Um, 
1393 is the record. And if I open it, 1393, the creator is Alice. I look back, and it says, well, all of these are grayed out. So I cannot modify. I can approve, I basically activate or reject. Activate meaning that it will basically trigger a record into ECC. All of this data at this point in time is in the staging area. I can look again at the notes. I can look at the attachments. I can. Uh, I could have added. The previous user could have added the data. Um, and I'll just go ahead and say activate. So as you can see, basically 1393, the activation has happened. So what I'm going to do is basically log out and go back as an Alice as a user and then see whether this record has happened, gotten created or not. And I'll click on the My Change Request reports where basically the 1393 record, it says test for webinar demo final checks approved. I'm going to just show you basic um, workflow log, what has, ha has happened. And if I look at the background steps, basically all of these patterns and all the background steps have completed. If I open this record, uh, I can open this record and show you all the details. But if you see, 5006588 record has been created. Let me actually open the record also uh, for you. And if I go to characteristics tab, in this case, sorry, this happened. One and two record parent, these two records have been created, and the parent is 5588. If I go to um, Back end now ECC system, I should be able to see this record. And as you can see, all of this record is there. And if I go to the variants also, it has got off white and silver uh, records also created with variant numbers also created, as you can see this. So this was a very quick uh, walkthrough of the demo of the creation of this article master with variant configuration. I'm going to switch some gears uh, into the uh, into an Excel file creation um, of your master data for article master. Yeah, as you can see, basically this is an Excel template which we have created. There's a Utopia MDG RFM tool which has been built, um, and as, as you can go into the settings, basically it is connecting to my um, MDG demo box. I will go ahead and do a login. And if I do a login, basically, it allows me to do a trigger of a change request. Before I trigger a change request, I want to show you something because I had tested this to make sure that this is working. Um, all of these records got created, and it shows me an error log. And it says 201, but did get created uh, 1390. Yeah. So I'm going to basically modify only one of those, just uh, um, just uh, for a quick demo uh, purpose. And I can give a uh, change request type as AR01. What change request type is behind the scenes it looks for what kind of a workflow which I'm triggering. And once it, this itself is a three-step workflow, I could configure a three, four-step workflow. And as you can see, uh, I would do a create. So this basically data is wiped out, and all of this data is already created. So I'm going to just show you this one record creation process. Uh, I'm going to just do a trigger of a change request. It's going to walk through the whole demo back again, and it is going to basically flip all these multiple record, mass record creation process. And it quickly basically sent out the data. And again, it basically created and identified, well, there's all the data records already exist. With these change requests, this was already committed, 13A. Uh, these all requests are open. I can show it to you. And 1394 is one record which got created. 
So as basically, if I go back, because it was Alice who created the workflow was tuned to go to Charlie. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, Bob. So I'm going to basically log on as Bob back again. And as you can see, uh, 1394 record got created CR2028. I want to show you one more additional functionality which we created. There's a enhanced functionality of the change request article which has been created, where additional fields have been added that what was this material creation, 202A, 201A. In past, basically, I created a 201A and a 202A. Um, so I can see what the material creation was, when it was sent, what is the change request type and all. But in addition to this enhancement of additional fields to this particular inbox, I have created an additional information so that I can view all of this data of all the backend structures, what all data has come in uh, live within that same screen. So there was no listing DC logistics in this Excel file which I created, but a lot of tax data, unit of measure, um, and the plant data and the MARA data is there. If I select two records, I've got two record data which has been now showing right now. Yeah. So I can see all of this data and the beauty of this is there is an approve and a reject button right here. So I can go ahead instead of launching and opening up a single request one at a time, which I could do it, I can do a mass approval process right here. And this has gone. So I'll log out again as Bob1, and I'll restart. And as a Charlie, I will basically. And I'll go back to the change request article, master. And as you can see, 201, 202A has been there. I can again select these records. I can activate or reject. So I'll go ahead and activate it. And they have gone. Yeah. I'm going to log out uh, again and show you as Alice what all my change requests were there. Uh, And I'll just click on my change request here itself. Yeah. As you can see, quite a lot of CR201A has been approved, 202 has been approved. Uh, for 202, this is DCR, uh, MDG, 202A, while any painkiller uh, description has been created in an article. Yeah. So I can go ahead and see in the back end system. Okay, as you can see, it has all the GTIN numbers um, and all the necessary details are there. Yeah. So coming back to the presentation, as you can see, what I demoed is two scenarios: uh, one through a request creation through a three-step workflow and through an Excel file creation of this workflow process. Um, and then I walked you through these demos. Um, but in net summary, the benefits of SAP master data governance for RFM is speed of new product introdu introductions. Uh, you can increase the speed and the number of new NPIs which are established as a single source of product information. Uh, share your product information across your enterprise, yeah? across your trading partners, synchronizing and collaborating. Implement your omni-channel experience with MDG. 
and improve your decision making process because it is creating a single version of the trip with all the necessary validations uh, and decrease your MDG IT cost with, uh, um, by managing uh, all your accurate master data across uh, different systems of record, eliminating your data silos. Yeah? Um, I'm going to basically pause here and um, give back the line to Lisa to open up for any questions which we have. Okay, thank you, Vita. Uh, I know people are starting to send their questions in, so if you do have any other questions, feel free to type those into the questions box now and send that over to me. Uh, the first question that we're going to start off with, uh, someone asked, is there a sample of business case for implementing RFM? Has any study evaluation been conducted? For example, the cost-benefit analysis of using the current manual processes versus using RFM? Yeah, so there are a couple of business scenarios which have happened and um, I mean I'll be happy to share and Seth also is on the line will be happy to share some of the cost benefits uh, and uh, with the value engineering of SAP and value prototype team of SAP uh, jointly has conducted some set of studies. So we'll be happy to share individually to some of those business uh, scenarios um, and the value adds of MDG RFM. Is that something you want to share privately? Yes. Okay. Well, then we will get in touch with you. Um, the next question is, uh, can you show us the hierarchy management in Article Master? Yeah. So the hierarchy management is a single field, which is a product hierarchy. And this is basically, it acts exactly as an F4 help, which allows you to fetch that hierarchy data um, from uh, from your MDG or your backend ECC system, um, and it's an attribute within an article master, and it is part of the additional field. I can quickly, um, if I can show you quickly, um, I will have to log back in, uh, or I'll be happy to show you through the. Um, To the creation process, I'll go back quickly to a search screen and try to do a copy uh, or let me go do a back the description. As you can see, basically, the one is the product hierarchy field, which basically allows you to do a search, and you can select all of these product hierarchies. And then there is an article hierarchy, which will allow you to add a node, which will get copied over as a reference article. Yeah? OK. Um, next question, Lisa. Lisa, back over to you. Next question. Um, yes, the next question is just a general question, so I can answer that. But it was, uh, can we share the deck after the presentation is over? We will share a version of the deck and send that over to everyone once uh, the presentation has concluded. So great question. Uh, the next question for you, Vipas, is asking, uh, have you thought about using addition functionality for Article Master? Um, no, we have not uh, using addition functionality at this point in time. We have not seen necessarily a business scenario. What we have found is a business scenario is on uh, activation should happen only at a particular, uh, only after a particular date, and that is possible through a workflow through the change request uh, um, due date timestamp, which could be put forward. So that is uh, something which the customers have asked, and we'll be a, we have been able to validate that that is standard as a uh, through a rule-based workflow. It is possible. Um, if there is any addition scenario 
requirement, we'll be happy to look at it at this point in time. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, is it possible to include social data to enable social MDM for fashion industry? Oh, absolutely. Any extensibility, you can add it. Yeah. And uh, how you add it is just to give you a very quick description is you would add additional uh, tab basically fields and table structures. You will run through the extensibility guides which are standard available as a master data governance extensibility guides on MDG, uh, on SDN. Um, you will extend it and bring in that data through the web service. This Excel file is uh, running with a backend calling a web service or, and launching the change request and you'll be able to bring in uh, and call that web service directly from any other uh, solution, not necessarily just an Excel file, but any other known SAP system. Um, so you could trigger it through NetWeaver PO, uh, process orchestration, or your data services, or your any middleware solution to bring in your data out into your MDG system. Okay, thank you for the answer. Uh, the next question is, how does the licensing work for MDG for RFM? Yeah, um, um, licensing is based on the number of articles in your uh, SAP business suite or your IS retail article system, uh, and based on those number of articles, they are based on for a record basis um, licensing. And, and the, the standard requires of ten thousand. Yeah. 10, yeah. Your SAP account executive will be able to step you through the mechanics of that. Okay, great. Next question. Can we create reference article in MDG? Yes, absolutely. I mean, one of these was creation and copying procedure was creating through the reference article. And uh, that was basically making sure that this variant configuration uh, copy is also enabled. So this is absolutely there and this is what I demoed it. Okay, uh, next question is, is, is the approve in my change request available for other master data like supplier customer? Oh yes, yeah. oh inbox is an inbox. So if you are running supplier and article master and you will as an end user you will be able to see both those records in your inbox. It's a standard MPG solution. Okay. Uh, next question is, is the Excel functionality Utopia SAP provided or another third party tool? It is Utopia SAP provided. It is not part of the standard licensing, and uh, uh, but it is a Utopia provided. Okay, great. Uh, how does MDG handle digital assets, pictures, specs, etc.? Yeah, so let me show you very quickly. There are a couple of ways. Uh, of course, one is um, running. Um, let me show back my screen um, and hope you can see the screen. Um, there is a URL image. So if you provide a URL image, the screen will start popping up as an image. So you're basically providing a link. And of course, we are right now also working with collab in collaboration with SAP product management team to enhance this with open text. So that is another scenario we'll be able to work through open text. But at this point in time, it can basically provide the linking relationship through this URL image. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, the next question is: Is it? Is there possibility to create assortment for mass listing? So presently, the assortment of mass listing is not there. This is something which we are discussing uh, on the exact scenarios. What's the val uh, What's the, going to be the usability for the next version, and what exactly level of assortment we need to provide? But assortments are in generally the fields available and 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 put forward. So this is being actively discussed. Okay. Uh, the next question is, is the display of the image of the article, for example, a purse in MDG, a standard feature? It is.
Okay, great. Uh, next question. Because of multi-channel data demand, do the fields that do not exist in the ERP files have to be added to ERP, or can they just remain in MDG for RFM? Um, they can remain in MDG for RFM, RFM. And what I mean, and let me elaborate, um, there are two ways to do the extensibility with an MDG as a standard solution. One is the reuse area, which means that you would need to extend the fields into your backend ECC ERP table structures. That is one way. The second way is um, putting those tables and the fields within the data model and telling the data model that it is part of my um, flex model. And what flex model means that the staging area fields also become an active area after a commit and an approval for those particular fields. So, and that also is very well, very clearly described as a standard operating for M SAP MDG um, as a standard guide, how to extend that. Okay, good. Next question. Is the consolidation feature that SAP introduced for SAP MDG 8.0 in the pipeline or available for SAP MDG RFM? At, at present, it is not available. We are actively looking on the use cases scenario for expanding the consolidation scenario. Uh, to MDG RFM. Right now it is only available, I believe, for business partner or a customer and I would need to revalidate this. Um, but for Article Master, we'll be looking and reviewing and would love to see the scenarios of the consolidation scenario. Okay, good question. Uh, next question, is NAS approval and Excel available for all master data objects? So I'm not sure about all master data ob objects. Uh, I can tell right now for MDG RFM, what I showed you as a uh, approve of selecting these math records that is possible of an approval math records. Um, just a caveat, in a standard offering in this version, that approve button which you saw is not available in a standard offering today. Uh, but this is was done for within a few hours of the development as an approve button. Uh, we will make that as an approve button in the next release also. But it can be basically provided as a how to guide quickly within, uh, which can be basically put forward within an hour of uh, coding. Um, we have already delivered and showed you. Um, I do not know, I cannot answer you for all the other master data domains. Okay, uh, next question is, work list is customized with additional columns. Is this applicable only for RFM? How will this work if there are multiple domains activated? Yeah, very good question. Actually, it is it is valid because your inbox or POWL technology, which is of MDG, um, you can extend it. There is an extensibility guide also provided how to do it, and you can make it available. Of course, if you have a custom field for one particular domain and another for another particular domain, yes, you will run into the challenge. This is the design aspect you will have to consider. Okay, great question. Our next question is, can we create merchandise category? Oh, yes. That is actually the first field um, which is made available, mer merchandising category, which is also um, grayed out once you have selected it. Okay, uh, the next question is, can this additional column be customized? I believe in reference to an earlier question. Uh, you can basically create in the back end additional categories what you wanted, and they will made, be made available as a drop down uh, um, in this MDGR system. And if you were okay. to extend it or do a mod, yeah, of course, that would not be a recommendation to do mods in your SAP business suite system, ECC system, but if you've already done it, sure, it will be made available, you can extend it. Okay, another question on the Excel tool, how can we get it? Yeah, we basically work with your SAP sales counterparts, we'll make it available as um, as a part of the discussions, um, and it is basically, yeah, pre-developed tool and a solution. 
Okay. Uh, is there an integration to DAM solutions like OpenText already available? Yeah. And yeah, as, as I said uh, in my previous thing uh, discussion, we are actively working with SAP product management team um, uh, across MDG and retail um, team product management, both of the teams to introduce and discuss about DM functionality and tighter integration. With an end state architecture provided by SAP, by SAP retail architecture slide, uh, MDG is one of the offerings and DM is another one of the another offerings. So we are actively working um, on, on that scenario. Okay, thanks for the great answer. Uh, next question is, can we be able to search with HANA search? Uh, good question. Today the search is based on a T-Rex in this version. Um, we have evaluated in this version you'll be able to extend as a uh, as a consulting project um, and uh, in the next version we are going to introduce the HANA search also. Okay, uh, the next question is will this handle new data fields for FMS, seasons and segmentation? Uh, this release, it does handle it. You can, as a consulting, you could extend it. Um, next release, we will handle seasons, which is planned. Um, and those are, I believe, four season fields which we are actively working. And we will make sure that we certify that on FMS release the next version. Okay. Uh, is it possible to provide metadata for data model AR? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question, Lisa? Sure. Is it possible to provide metadata for data model AR? Uh huh. Yes, it is uh, a standard available. Um, the data model AR. Um, on a case by case, we can publish it uh, directly or via SAP uh, product management team. It can be made available. Yeah. Okay, and a follow up question to that. Uh, our data model AR creates on the fly CR in case of math changes. Um, sorry, I don't understand this question. Can you repeat the question? Sure. It says our data model AR created on the fly CR in case of math change. No, data model is a one time activity. Yeah. First of all, data model is a one time activity. Once you've created the data model, you, it's, it's active, it's actively available. For a math, create through this Excel file is a utility which we are providing. And, uh, and it is across all your, uh, all your aspects of the data model. The, this is a standard Excel utility which we have provided. And if you do not like the format, you will have to customize, uh, customize it and change the web service behind the scenes, uh, which will provide you out of the box. And uh, you can pretty much, it is, if the question is, all the fields of the data model are provided? Yes. The answer is yes. OK. Uh, next question is, can it be possible to create info record in article? Um, install records in article? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? Info record in article. Oh yes, yes. As I saw, I said, purchase info record is a standard solution, and Infrac also is IDOC, which we provide you as a standard out of the box solution. Okay. Uh, is there any BCV panel delivered with RFM? Yes. So logistics BC, all of these are provided as a standard solution. Okay, and the last question of the day is, when can we expect the next version? Uh, it is, uh, the exact dates can never be announced. We go through the same quality QGate cycle what SAP goes through the product. Um, the tentative date is uh, early Q3 of this year, in, so next few months. All right, well, thank you, Vigas, for uh, hosting the presentation here. Thank you, all of our attendees, for uh, joining us today. Uh, please uh, stand by for an email with the deck from today's webinar. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to give us a shout. Thank you again.
Thank you.